Hi everybody, I'm Renee from Kudos Kitchen and today I am here and we're going to be making deviled ham and eggs. Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> uh, the, the reason for this recipe, this recipe rather I should say, came about because I had a lot of leftover ham in my refrigerator and I needed to kind of come up with an idea of what to use it for. So light bulb moment, everybody likes deviled eggs. So I thought let's just combine the two and make deviled ham and eggs. So that's what we're up to. Just to let you know what I did do with the ham is I, the slices, I kind of cut them up and put them through the food processor. So I pretty much have ham crumbles here. It was very easy to do. Only took a couple of, couple of minutes to make a good amount of ham crumbles. So I'm going to be adding that to our deviled ham and egg mixture. So for right now, I'm going to set that aside that I already pre-boiled my eggs. So I like using this tall pot because the eggs don't slosh around in there too much when they're boiling and they kind of are nice and contained so less cracking happens. Um, I do like that aspect very well and I do like this pot I just think it's a real pretty pot so this time because I sometimes struggle with um, maybe you do too getting the shells cleanly off the eggs so this time what I did was I boiled them um, with one teaspoon of baking soda in the water and also to prevent that gray ring from forming around a hard-boiled egg which is unappetizing don't cook them. That's a sign that you've cooked your eggs too long. So what I did is I brought the water to a boil with the egg. I started the eggs in cold water. No flame. Turn the flame on. Put my baking soda in there. Put my eggs in there in this pot. And then I turned the flame up to roughly medium. Let it come to a boil. As soon as it came to a boil, I turned the heat off put the lid on the pot and let them sit for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes time, I took them out of the water, ran some cold water on them, and then let them cool down completely. And I've, they've been in the refrigerator for several days. So that's what I did to prepare the eggs. Now we're gonna see how easily the shells come off. So cross your fingers. And I have a trick for that too. We're gonna see how that works. Go so crack your eggs on a surface and this is what I've heard and this is what we're going to try to do after they get all nice and cracky technical term put them in a bowl of water and what that's supposed to do is the water then is supposed to seep under the cracks and gently lift the shells off the eggs so they will um, peel much easier so I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll come back in a minute and see how that goes. <laughs> okay. Here are all my cracked up eggs in the bowl full of water. I'm going to let them sit for a couple of minutes and make sure that the water has enough opportunity to get under those shells and really lift them. So in the meantime, we'll go through the list of ingredients I'm going to be using for deviled ham and eggs. As I mentioned earlier, the um, chopped up ham, I'm going to also use Dijon mustard, some sweet pickle relish, which maybe sounds a little unusual with deviled eggs, but I thought that would help offset the saltiness of the ham. So we're going to also be using mayonnaise, of course the egg yolks, after I get them out of the eggs, and pepper. I'm not going to add any salt because I think with the ham it would be, the, egg, the deviled eggs would be way too salty. So that's basically it. It's pretty easy, very few ingredients, and I really think they're gonna taste good. So we'll get there next, hang on. All right, so the eggs have sat for a few minutes and we're going to give them, give them a peel and see how that goes. Dry them off a little bit with a paper towel and gently the eggs. Seems to be working pretty well. I don't know if it was the soaking in the water or the baking soda in the water, but whatever it is, I will take it. <laughs> of course, right after I said that, I struggled. Here we go. 
I've also heard that using older eggs is better for hard boiling for whatever reason. So don't do hard boiled eggs right away when you buy your eggs from the grocery store. Wait, wait a couple of weeks. I peeled the egg. I got the egg out of its shell. Slice it in half. You know the drill. And they're cooked pretty well. There's really no gray, ugly gray ring. So I'm popping out the yolks, putting all the yolks aside in a separate bowl. Here they are. And I'm gonna complete the rest of the eggs and be back in a minute. Okay, <laughs> that tedious task was finished. So the eggs are in their little holders, and let's go ahead and make the filling. Here are the yolks from the 10 eggs, which I'm going to use a pastry blender. Blender. You can use forks, whatever you like, to give them a quick mash. Nice egg crumbles. And I'm not going to use all the mayonnaise at first because I want to see how creamy this is before I go ahead and do that. So probably I'm going to start with a half a cup of mayonnaise. This is not much more than a half a cup in this bowl, but that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to stir it to combine. See how creamy it is. I might want to add more mayonnaise, what's left in the bowl. Probably I do. Let's just go ahead and do it. Not much anyways, a tablespoon left. And we'll add the Dijon mustard. This is approximately two teaspoons. The sweet pickle relish. This is approximately two heaping teaspoons. Again, the sweet relish is to kind of um, offset the saltiness of the ham, kind of balance it. And the ham comes next. Oh, it smells good. It smells very good. If you like deviled eggs, I think this is going to be a winner for you. Deviled ham and eggs. If you like this video, and I hope that you do, I hope you consider subscribing to my Kudos Kitchen channel on YouTube. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit that little um, notification bell, and that way you won't miss any new videos that I will plan I'm putting out on a pretty regular basis here. And also, this recipe can be found on my website, kudoskitchenbyrenate.com. That's where all my recipes live. I'm going to add the ham, and I'm probably going to add all of it. So this is, I'm going to say, approximately a cup and a half. And give it a nice, good stir. thing I didn't add yet is I was going to add some black pepper, but no salt. So I like pepper, so generous pinch of black pepper. Oh, it looks good. I'm happy with the way this is smelling for sure, and I'll give it a taste and let you know. Okay, so here's my little taste test. Oh, I like that. I like that very much. Next, we'll put it in a piping bag, fill the eggs, we're good to go. Alrighty, now it's time to fill the pastry bag. And what I'm going to do, and, and you can just use a Ziploc, a large Ziploc um, bag, a gallon size probably would be your best bet. Put it all your egg mixture into the bag or use your piping bag, and I'm using a a, a piping tip. It's a 2A, so it's got a big um, opening because this is rather chunky and I don't want any of the bits to get stuck in the tube, so I made sure that the tip was going to be nice and good size. And I'm going to fill the bag with the egg mixture, as you would if you were using a Ziploc bag, just like this. Okay, shake it down to the bottom, or as you would, you would shake it into the tip of a Ziploc bag and cut off, a, you know, a half an inch on the um, 
square, half inch at the bottom square, and you're ready to pipe into your, into your deviled eggs. Now you may have more filling than you'll need for your eggs, and that's okay too because this would be really good, I think, on a sandwich, like toast. Yum. Or what else could you do with it? What else could you do with it? <laughs> I'm sure you could think of a lot of things. If you think of a lot of things, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. You know, this would be good. Stuffed celery. You might want to do that. Or like a dip for vegetables. I know maybe that's a little weird sounding, but I think that would be good. Why not? There we go. And then I'm going to finish them off with just a little chopped chives. And keep them in the refrigerator until you're ready to serve. Don't leave them out for longer than maybe three hours. And I do believe your family and friends will be very happy with these. I know I would be. So there you go, another recipe from my Kudos Kitchen. I hope you enjoyed it. I specialize in easy, delicious recipes that the entire family will enjoy. <laughs> so there you go. Thanks for visiting me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and please come again. Have a good day, bye. Okay, before I go, I'm gonna test it out for you. Really see how I like it. Okay, ready? <laughs> If you're like me, you probably pop them right into your mouth, right? No bites? Yeah, no bites. <laughs>